Hi, I'm Kent Myers and welcome to The Verdict. Uh, Mick Cornett is not here today, but we believe he will be back next week. We certainly hope so, but we're glad you're here. And back with us uh, in lieu of Mick Cornett is a guest uh, that we had last week, uh, the Honorable Ernest Istook, the Congressman from the 5th District of Oklahoma. But uh, for this week, he is candidate Istook, who is, uh, uh, he has announced his candidacy for Governor of the State of Oklahoma. We look forward to visiting with uh, uh, candidate Istook in just a minute. Um, I would like to uh, point out that the, the uh, title for his campaign is Vision and Values for Oklahoma, and we're going to be wanting to talk to him about that. Uh, we uh, <clears throat> hope that you will enjoy the visit. Uh, I hope you enjoyed last week's visit, and we hope you'll enjoy this week's visit with Congressman Ernest Istook. But before we get to that, let's get to a break. We'll see you in just a minute. For one Oklahoma-based company, success didn't happen overnight. Initially, the days were long, 80-hour weeks common. As we grew, we wanted to share our success, and the ideals of corporate and civic responsibility found a welcome home. Today, we're the largest investor in the Sooner State and a source for exciting, new, high-quality jobs. We're Chesapeake Energy, committed to building a better Oklahoma. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You need this one to get satellite HD. This one's your DVR. This one's for local channels. Um, this one's... What are we supposed to do with all this stuff? Got you covered. Oh, by the way, that old satellite stuff makes a great end cable. That doesn't look so bad, right, honey? Don't live in satellite denial. Get the latest entertainment without the hassles. From Cox, your friend in the digital age. Not sure where you're headed? NATS can help you find your way. It's the National Athletic Testing System. We call it NATS. You'll call it your launching pad to success. NATS will give you a standardized evaluation that will help you measure your performance and give that information to college coaches so they can accurately evaluate your potential. NATS also helps with academic support. Join with the Oklahoma High School Football Coaches Association and head for success at www.nats.us. Verdict. I'm Kent Myers. Uh, across the table from me is a familiar face to uh, all Oklahomans, I'm sure. The Honorable Ernest Istook. Uh, we're sure pleased you're back with us again this week. Thanks, Kent. Uh, we have you back as candidate Istook this week. Uh, uh, the congressman has served for 14 years uh, representing the 5th District here in Oklahoma, educated at Baylor University and at OCU University. He has served at virtually all levels of government from uh, municipal level all the way up to the highest levels in Washington. Uh, we are pleased you'd come back and talk to us about your candidacy for governor. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. Oklahoma's important. It is indeed. How uh, difficult uh, a decision was it uh, to decide to run for governor this time? Well, it's certainly something that uh, my wife Judy and I approached very prayerfully because my goal is to serve where I can best serve and where I can hopefully make a positive difference. And in all the years that I've spent in Washington, D.C., of course, I've always tried to have just as much time here in Oklahoma as I did in Washington. So splitting time equally, building up a lot of frequent flyer miles, going back and forth. <laughs> and uh, even, though, even though I've been serving in Washington, my heart 
uh, has always been in Oklahoma. I believe Oklahoma, with better leadership, can make a lot better progress. I know four years ago, uh, you looked at the governor's race, True. decided not to do it, decided to stay where you were, and you made a different decision this time. Uh, what was different last time as opposed to this time? Well, sometimes you have some, some things that you haven't finished doing. For example, let's take the downtown expressway, the crosstown expressway interstate I-40 through Oklahoma City. Uh, I knew that my presence in Washington was instrumental to getting the federal funding that we needed. Uh, we've gotten over $300 million from the federal government now for the rerouting of that interstate. Unfortunately, I've seen that at the same time, the state has not put in one single penny into the most important transportation project uh, ever in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, that was very discouraging to me, uh, to find that state officials did not recognize the importance of our infrastructure, of our transportation network, to the growth of this state, to the ability to bring in jobs so that businesses know they can bring in raw materials and ship out the finished goods, because we've got the robust network of highways and a freight rail. Uh, so things like that were part of the factor. Uh, seeing what I think was uh, leadership that was trying to take the state in the wrong direction. I don't think you can tax and gamble your way to prosperity. Uh, I mean, you look at the impact of gambling. There was an article just in the paper about the number of food stamp applications is up in Oklahoma. Now that's kind of curious. I talked with one of the members of the governing commission last night. Food stamps applications are up even though more people have jobs. The reason is more people are frittering away their money at the casinos and on the lottery who cannot afford to do so. I don't want to create that kind of problem. Well, let's talk about your congressional seat a minute. Let's do it. Uh, because of your service and, and your position there and other factors, uh, that's considered by many a safe seat for you. You could have stayed there probably as long as you chose to do so. Was it a difficult decision leaving what is, is a safe seat and seeking something that uh, you is brand new? It is difficult, although when I went to Washington, I never intended to stay there forever. And 14 years uh, serving the 5th District and the state in Washington is, is a good period of time. Uh, it was challenging. Now, politically speaking, uh, I believe that another Republican will probably uh, win the seat. I certainly expect that. But people tell me, Ernest, you could have kept that seat the rest of your life. And, and maybe that's true. But then again, what kind of opportunities are we missing out in Oklahoma? Um, you know, as a father of five and a grandfather of seven, I know that we don't have enough opportunity in the state. We've got good people, we've got great resources, but we don't have the kind of leadership that structures the environment and makes the priority decisions that will enable growth so that Oklahomans have a future in Oklahoma, not in a different state. Why don't you summarize for us, uh, not too briefly, just as, uh, as uh, elaborately as you choose to, the principal reasons you decided to run for governor? Because I think Oklahoma can do better and should do better and with right leadership will do better. Uh, I think that, like I say, the underinvestment uh, in infrastructure, uh, the expansion of government, do, most people have no idea how fast government in Oklahoma is growing. You know what's growing faster than the federal government? State government, okay? And, and yet, it's not being handled in a way that really improves people's lives, that improves the opportunity, that brings the kind of high paying jobs here that I've worked in Congress to bring here, the medical research jobs, the aerospace jobs, some of the best paying jobs we have. And yet I've seen in so many of the partnerships that I've helped create to build those, the local officials have been willing, the private sector has been willing, but state government has been absent. So seeing that happen over these last four years certainly helped convince me that better leadership was le needed, not just to give lip service to certain things, but to give leadership to them. Uh, recently, uh, there's been a, uh, a lawsuit filed against the state of Oklahoma uh, by a number of organizations, uh, and, and I noticed that uh, your campaign uh, put out some material that was somewhat critical of that. Oh, but sure. Can you talk a little bit about that? You bet. The Oklahoma Education Association, and with a couple of other school districts with them, have filed a lawsuit against the state of Oklahoma, saying they want the courts to take over the decision making of how much money we spend on public schools, and they want to increase it by four billion dollars. Well, that money's got to come from someplace. Uh, whether it comes in the form of higher taxes, school consolidation, but it comes from you and me. 
But the big issue here is not how you, not how much money you put into education, but Kent, the decision is who decides. I don't want judges usurping the role of the people and their elected representatives in deciding how high our taxes are going to be and how our money is being spent. That is wrong. The, the teachers union has attacked democracy and democracy ought to attack back. What I've said to the governor and legislators is put it on the ballot. They claim that there is a, a requirement in the state constitution it's kind of like invisible language, nobody else sees it there. But they claim the state constitution give the courts the right and the obligation to take over these decisions. So why don't we then just put it to the people a vote to put language in the state constitution that says the amount of education funding and taxes to support it shall be determined by the people and by their elected representatives, not by the courts. You know, that sort of thing is done all the time. Uh, you, you have legislation to change what's going on in the courts. It's common, and I cannot believe the timidity of the governor in just kind of wringing his hands over this lawsuit rather than giving us some leadership and saying, we are not going to undo democracy and let the courts take over. Uh, changing the subject just a, sure. a minute, uh, you had, in your reference to uh, food stamps, you indicated a little bit of concern or some concern about sure. the gambling and its effect in Oklahoma. If you were governor, what would you do about that? Since Obviously, it's the law of the state. Uh, of course, it's the law. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to say that you can undo what's already done, but you can confine it to make sure that it doesn't get worse. Uh, the people that are doing most of the gambling are the people who can least afford to be able to do so. I've talked to district attorneys who tell me the number of hot checks is up. I've talked to bankers who tell me that the number of defaults, especially on consumer loans, is up. And of course, as I mentioned, now the food stamp numbers, even though more people have jobs, still more are applying for food stamps. You don't bring opportunity to a state by expanding gambling. We're not getting new money into Oklahoma from this. We're just shifting around the money that we already have with state government taking a bite out of it, which means that money is not available to the private sector. It's not available to build jobs. It's not available for investment capital. Uh, it's not available to provide more opportunity. So it's, it's a bad system, and this was, you know, the signature issue for Governor Brad Henry. Let's go to a break, if you don't mind. Let's do we'll it. come back. We're visiting with uh, Congressman Ernest Iztook, candidate, <clears throat> excuse me, for governor of the state of Oklahoma. We'll see you in just a minute. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And Blankenship has stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Leaving it fourth and seven on the Tiger, 46 yard line. 38 seconds on the clock, and the Tigers have no choice but to go. Wiggins ended his kicking. Here's the snap. R.S.M. McGladry. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. R.S.M. McGladry. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. Eres tú. There you go. Thank you. Cox Communications está buscando empleados entusiásticos y motivados. Disfruta de nuestros beneficios, pago competitivo, grandes ventajas y oportunidades para el adelanto. Si desea hacer una diferencia, tenemos un lugar para usted aquí con Cox Communications. Visítanos en el internet o llame para ver qué oportunidades tenemos para usted aquí en Cox. Eres tú. Cox Communications está orgulloso de ofrecer igualdad de empleos. The Cox Channel. More sports. More fans. More cheerleaders. More fun. 
nobody does more local sports. And nobody does it better. We're visiting today with the Honorable Ernest Istook, candidate for governor of the state of Oklahoma. And when we uh, uh, broke, we were talking a little bit about this lawsuit that's been filed and the fact that it's apparently asking the courts to do something in the way of funding education. Right. Uh, in your view, what does need to be done, if anything, about funding education? Well, certainly we know that we want teachers to be better paid in Oklahoma. I don't think there's any doubt uh, about that. And part of that means stripping away the bureaucracy uh, that prevents money from actually getting to the classroom. But, but Kent, we should never make the mistake of thinking that education is just about money. The single most important factor that determines the quality of a child's education is the degree in which their parents are involved with it. We have to talk about education differently if we want parents to be involved. Rather than all these arguments that say, well, your child's not getting a good enough education because the teacher's not being paid enough. No, that gives parents an excuse. It gives them a cop-out. We don't want that. Uh, we also need discipline in the system. If you've ever had, I don't know if you had maybe Tracy McDaniel of the KIPP school, uh, over in the northeast side here. KIPP means knowledge is power program. Mm. Over in the old FD Moon School, we have a middle school in Oklahoma City that has kids that are, you know, they're minority kids. Uh, they're from, uh, you know, low range of economics. Kids that normally you would expect to be dropping out of school and so forth. They are vibrant, they are excited, they are learning. They're going to school about two and a half hours more than other kids do. They have larger classroom sizes. They have discipline. They learn things. They are all devoted to going to college. And it's all because they have a program that requires parents to be involved and requires discipline in the, in the classroom. The teachers, the principal, the students, the parents all sign a little contract. When you have discipline in the system, when you have parents involved in a system, then you begin to realize it's not just about money. We have to talk about that in education if we want the premier education we need and to make sure that each generation is devoted to doing better than the last one. In my whole family tree, I'm the very first college graduate. But with, with five kids, all five kids have college degrees. We've got four advanced college degrees among them. And instilling that attitude has got to be done. I, I was struck by your uh, campaign slogan uh, or the phrase, uh, vision and values you bet. for Oklahoma. Tell our viewers what you mean by that. You have to have the vision to make things happen and the values to make them worthwhile. Oklahoma still believes in the, the premier values that our founding fathers believed and promoted and for what people have fought and died for around the country. A state with values like that needs to be at the forefront of growth, not lagging behind. And with proper leadership, fixing, fixing the tax code that drives away prosperity. How many people do you know, Kent? I know a bunch that have left Oklahoma for tax reasons. Their business is still here, but because of the income tax bite and the inheritance tax, they have taken their money elsewhere. We need that money. We need that opportunity in Oklahoma. We need to stop having a tax code that's based upon jealousy and start having one that's based upon promoting growth so that we can get these Oklahomans back here helping us. Uh I know that from time to time there's been a good bit of discussion in the papers and elsewhere about the gaming compacts and the tobacco compacts. Sure. I'm uh, sure you're familiar generally with those and what the, either the pluses or the minuses of them are. Can you right. talk about those? Sure. <clears throat> we should not have special treatment for, for different groups of people. And, you know, it, it's a challenge. And many of us, uh, you know, I guess I'm 132nd Cherokee. Does that give me rights different than other people? No, uh, it didn't and it shouldn't. But let's just, let's just focus on the tobacco compacts, okay? okay? When the people of Oklahoma voted to increase the tobacco tax, they were told that'll produce money for state government for health programs and it'll reduce smoking. So they said, okay, we'll raise it from 23 cents a pack to a dollar three cents a pack. Nobody told them. The governor had already signed sweetheart deals with a select group of Indian tribes saying that while we're raising it to a dollar three pack on everyone else, for you, we're lowering it to six cents a pack. Now, more than half the cigarettes sold in Oklahoma are at this discounted rate, contrary to what the voters wanted. It is not reducing smoking. In fact, 
it is the cheapest cigarettes in America are now sold in Oklahoma because of the sweetheart deals the governor signed and the state treasury has lost over a hundred million dollars in lost revenue. People that don't get the sweetheart deal are being pushed out of business. People that were the governor's favorites and got the sweetheart deal are getting their corner in the market. They're getting a virtual monopoly in tobacco sales. That is not what the people wanted. That is one of the worst scandals we've ever had in state history. If you were elected, is there anything you can do with an existing compact? Well, I think there's some serious questions about the legality of them. Of course, these compacts were, Brad Henry did them, Scott Meacham, the state treasurer, was his negotiator for them. They did a lousy job. It was mismanagement. They didn't represent the state. Uh, we have one state representative, Kevin Calvey, who's already asked the state attorney general if these compacts are even legal because they didn't even ask the legislature to help approve them. The governor just did it with the stroke of a pen to give away all this money and all this special treatment. Uh, let me change the subject just a bit. Sure. Uh, your race. Mm -hmm. uh, first statewide race. You uh, ran uh, obviously very effectively in the 5th District for uh, a number of times. Right. Uh, will a statewide race uh, put any demands on you that uh, you think are going to be difficult? Oh, it's definitely more challenging. When you're running statewide, you're taking on an incumbent. Uh, it's a difficult challenge, but fortunately, I've done work that helps people uh, all across Oklahoma. For example, some of the transportation uh, that I have provided funding for in all areas of the state. I've been around all parts of the state, so I'm known. Uh, people know I've been recognized as one of the top 20 conservative members of the U.S. Congress. Uh, so I'm already a familiar face, but yes, it is talking about doing it with a different role. Um, Governor Henry, uh, it's been reported, has significant approval ratings. Uh, high numbers for approval. How will you deal with that? Well, first you understand what they're actually polling. They're saying, well, do you have a favorable opinion of somebody? And people say yes. You know, Ann Richards, when she was governor of Texas, had an approval rating higher than Brad Henry's, and she lost. Mm -hmm. Because there's a difference between people saying, well, you're, you're, you, they seem like a nice enough person, and saying, are they a leader? I refer to this as the vanilla wafer theory. Which is, how do you Which is that? this, okay? Do you like vanilla wafers? I love them. Okay. Too much. All right. Just about everybody likes vanilla wafers, but for most people, they're not the favorite. You give them another choice, they want something else. People don't want a vanilla wafer governor when they don't know what they stand for, and they don't have the ability to go out and talk to people in industry and make a positive impression on behalf of the state to bring jobs and opportunity to the state. We can do better. Let's take the time we're remaining, which isn't but about a minute or so, you and ask you to just look at the camera or however you want to do this and uh, tell the people of Oklahoma why they should elect you governor. Oh, I appreciate that, and thank you for the opportunity. Well, Kent. we're pleased you joined you us. You bet. Oklahoma is a terrific state. We've got great people. We've got wonderful resources, but we don't have the leadership that we should have. You look at the growth rate in Oklahoma. Do we grow? Sure, but we lag behind the rest of the country. And it's because of leadership issues. That's why we lost a seat uh, in the Congress. If we have the right leadership, if we have someone that quits chasing away prosperity and that really believes in the high-tech jobs that I have helped to bring to Oklahoma already, then we know that we can make opportunity for our kids to stay in the state. With five kids born and raised in Oklahoma, went to public schools here, and now seven grandkids, I don't want to go out of state to visit my grandkids. I want them to have opportunity right here, and I think I can make it happen. Congressman Iztook, thank you so much for joining us. We're out of time. It's Best of luck to you and your campaign. Wonderful. Wish you good luck. Thank you, Kent. Uh, we'll be back in just a second. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. Bringing out the best in each student, that is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. 
Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities, parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall. Hello, anybody home? Hi. Digital Max, welcome to the neighborhood. Hello, kid. Whoa, I haven't seen a digital tangle like that since... Yeah. You need Cox Connections. With one connection, you get the whole digital enchilada. Kind of like this. Wow. What are you waiting for? Get one connection to all your digital services from Cox. I think I pulled something. Your friend in the digital age. Eres tú. There you go. Cox Communications está buscando empleados entusiásticos y motivados. Disfruta de nuestros beneficios. Pago competitivo, grandes ventajas y oportunidades para el adelante. Si desea hacer una diferencia, tenemos un lugar para usted aquí con Cox Communications. Visítanos en el internet o llame para ver qué oportunidades tenemos para usted aquí en Cox. Eres tú. Cox Communications está orgulloso de ofrecer igualdad de empleos. Welcome back to The Verdict. I'm Kent Myers. Thanks so much for Congressman Iztux joining us uh, for two shows, one as congressman and one as candidate. We hope those uh, shows were interesting to you and you learned a lot about it. Uh, the congressman's website is iztux.com uh, and of course ours is theverdict.tv. Please uh, get on our website and tell us what kind of show you'd like to see in the future because we do pay attention to the comments uh, that you uh, give us. And by the way, speaking of next week's show, we're going to have uh, District Attorney Wes Lane and Headmaster Charles Britton uh, from uh, Cassidy School talking about the dangers of the internet to uh, middle school and high school children and what is being done to try to stop uh, pedophiles, pornography and the like uh, from being rampant uh, on the internet and what kind of law enforcement problems there are in that regard. We think you'll find this uh, interesting and enjoyable. For my partner Mick Cornett, thanks so much for staying with us on The Verdict week after week and we hope to see you next week. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.